Okay, we will start with chapter 3, it's a pneumatic component. So we are still uh, learning about pneumatic components, so different types of components used in uh, pneumatic uh, circuit. Uh, so uh, initially, uh, chapter 1, we saw on the introduction to pneumatic. Then uh, chapter 2, we covered earlier uh, pneumatic components related to pneumatic valve. And now we are entering to the power elements uh, we call as uh, actuators. Okay, so we see the classifications. We have supply elements. So supply elements we have seen in chapter one. So input processing and control element we saw in chapter two. And chapter three will cover only on the power element. So power element, it normally will be the actuators, so like cylinders and also rotary motors. Okay, so we will see what is a pneumatic actuators. So pneumatic actuators are the devices used for converting uh, pressure energy of compressed air into mechanical energy to perform useful work. Uh, so this is something to know. Uh, so what what is the definition of pneumatic actuators? So this is the actuate uh, the definition. So we want to use the converting the pressure energy. Uh, so pressure energy is actually coming from the compressor. Kalau uh, compress, so no pressure energy. Uh, so in order to use as a pneumatic component, so you perlu other pressure energy. Uh, so normal normal air you cannot use. So you need to pressurize the air. Then you need to use that uh, pressure energy convert it to mechanical energy mechanical energy is something that uh, mo involving movements uh, so apa -apa yang ada movement or just cylinder movement or rotary movement uh, so drilling or stamping uh, so something that have movement so it is uh, pressure energy is converted to mechanic mechanical energy and you want to use use it to perform useful work so useful work, something that you want to do. Uh, so it can be anything. So in other words, actuators are used to perform the task of exerting the required force at the end of the stroke or used to create displacement by the movement of the piston. Uh, so exerting the required force. So you depart uh, pressure energy, so you are converting it to force. So you are doing something. Okay, so it's an other word. The pressurized air from the comp compressor is supplied to reservoir. Uh, so, selalunya kita can compress, simpan dalam reservoir, then only use. Okay, so I think why we are doing that, we, I already explained in chapter 1. So, you want to ma maintain a constant pressure throughout the operation. If not, we will have a fluctuating pressure. So, the pressurized air from the storage or reservoir is supplied to pneumatic actuator to do work. Uh, so this is on the pneumatic actuators. Okay, so pneumatic actuators, so it can be linear, uh, ataupun kita panggil as a pneumatic cylinders, or we can have a rotary actuators. Okay, rotary actuators, uh, yang ada rotary movement. So it's not a cylinder lah, berputar. Okay, so there are two types. Okay, so we will see linear actuators first. So linear actuators are the cylinder. So pneumatic, kita panggil as a pneumatic cylinder. So pneumatic cylinders are devices for converting the air pressure into linear mechanical force uh, and motion. Uh, so yang ni adalah linear. So you cannot, uh, pneumatic cylinder tak boleh buat benda yang berputar. Okay, because it's uh, something where uh, linear. So limit, uh, pneumatic cylinders are basically used for single purpose application like stamping, clamping, transferring, branching, allocating, injecting, metering, tilting, bending, turning and other application. Uh, the car industry uh, very common to see all these things. Uh, so I think the uh, Minibia pun ada tu ada dia ada tunjuk. So how the automations are doing. So pneumatic is pushing the DC motor, uh, uh, stamping, uh, so a lot of things. Can. Uh, so that is what a pneumatic cylinders will do. 
So pneumatic cylinders, there are two types of linear actuator. One we call as a single acting cylinder and one more is double acting cylinder. So I think in chapter two, you have seen these uh, terms, single acting cylinder and double acting cylinder. So we'll see later. So what are those? Okay, so what are uh, single acting cylinders and double acting cylinders? And we also can have a special linear actuators because sometimes in industry, you need to do a unique kind of work, uh, something that very unusual. Uh, then you can have a special, specially designed actuators, specially designed cylinders. So like telescopic cylinder, we have a tandem cylinder, rotless cylinder. Uh, so all these special linear actuator cylinders, uh, they are based on demand. So color company willing to buy, so company willing to uh, pay a lot of money. Uh, so because normally the lin special linear actuators are expensive. Okay, because it's not usually uh, so benda -benda yang, uh, special edition to selalunya will be expensive kan. Uh, so uh, something like that. So all this will be exp expensive. But single acting and double acting cylinder are normally available. They are normally available. Okay, so we'll see first what is single acting cylinder. So single acting cylinder ataupun kita selalu panggil as SAC. Uh, SAC. So if in the question is written SAC, so you know single acting cylinder. Uh, don't at that time you want to ask. So what is SAC? So SAC is stands for single acting cylinder. Okay, so single acting cylinder. So uh, construction there. So it only has one working port. Forward motion of the piston is obtained by supplying compressed air in to the port. Return motion of the piston is obtained by spring place to the rod side of the cylinder. So I, I will show you later. So on this. So single acting cylinder are used where force is required to be exerted only in one direction. Uh, so single acting cylinder is normally taking only one working port. So they cuma ambil uh, force from one side. The return one is uh, based on spring. Okay, so the single acting cylinder is usually available in short stroke length. So maximum boleh pergi sampai 80mm. Tak banyak lah. So 80mm, 8cm je. Okay, so I think half of your pembalis kecil. Uh, so not, not much. Uh, but if your application only requires that kind of length, so you can use a single acting cylinder. Uh, so you can apply 80 millimeter because that's the natural length of a spring. Because sebab dalam tu ada spring. Uh, so biasanya spring tu hanya uh, biasanya ada dalam 80 millimeter. So uh, the single acting cylinder pun kecil lah. So single acting cylinder exists for only in one direction. So it requires half the air volume. Uh, kita put half the air volume because the return is based on mechanical, uh, based on spring. Uh, so this is a single acting cylinder. So you can see, so you only have one working port. Ataupun kita uh, panggil dekat sini pressure port. So you have a cylinder. So you have a piston and you have a rod. Okay, piston rod. Okay, so all these uh, labels you can ingat. Okay, so what is working port? What is rod? So what is piston? So piston adalah bagian yang penuh. Uh, so you have uh, two walls. Okay, so this is your barrel. Okay, and uh, so it's connecting uh, barrel to barrel. Okay, so what, this surface to this surface. And rod normally uh, you will have a space in between. Like I so so that's a smaller smaller part lah. So yang penuh tu adalah piston. Okay, so you have a working port here. Uh, so you have a piston, you have a rod. So you can see here you have a spring. So kalau udara masuk, uh, so udara akan create a force. 
dia akan push piston ni ke sini ha, because continuously so cuba bayangkan udara ni macam air kalau air keep on masuk uh, so air akan create a force it will push this thing to on the right uh, so udara yang ada dekat sini dia akan keluar melalui vent ni uh, udara baru masuk udara yang ada tu dia kena keluar ok so it will extend or retract based on the operation so return so kalau you uh, you stop stop giving uh, this automatically this thing will retract because no new input dekat sini akan jadi kosong uh, then uh, what will happen the spring will push it back outside okay so there are varying design of single acting cylinder including diaphragm cylinder you have a rolling diaphragm cylinder and also spring return single acting cylinder Okay, so we'll see first one, diaphragm cylinder. Uh, so diaphragm cylinder, so piston. Uh, yang, yang ini adalah piston. So piston is uh, replaced with diaphragm. Okay, diaphragm. So uh, uh, the diaphragm can be a uh, hard rubber, plastic or metal. So in between ada ini. So udara masuk, so it will push the diaphragm. Uh, so diaphragm akan masuk. Okay, masuk and uh, also so it will make the necessary uh, application lah ok so the operating stem so you yeah, this time the sini so since uh, diaphragm so the term ni pun ditukar ke stem which uh, take place in the rod and the diaphragm uh, so yang ni lagi, lagi kecil so it's only 60mm Maximum 60 mm. Tadi 80, 80 mm. So yeah, this is only 60 mm. So if your uh, so tengok uh, bentuk dia pun so bentuk bentuk dia a bit like uh, unusual uh, bukan macam the normal piston. So maybe if your space uh, for the cylinder you you only have uh, that kind of space. Uh, yang panjang tapi dekat sini is a bit like shorter uh, then you can utilize this uh, so it's based on the design uh, tapi you need to understand that the maximum you can extend is up to 60mm ok uh, quite pendek lah um, but uh, to counter that you have a rolling diaphragm cylinder so you have a expandable material Okay, expandable material so it's a durable uh, dekat sini eh, it's a bit different so concept dia sama so udara masuk diaphragm will expand uh, but you can see udara boleh simpan lagi banyak and it can it's flexible and it's a durable ok so it can go uh, maximum uh, and here uh, you can increase so you can have a longer operating stroke it can go up to 80 mm or 80 cm it's almost 1 meter uh, so quite, quite panjang uh, besar lah ok so quite besar uh, quite panjang lah ok so the material used uh, for rolling diaphragm in present day uh, present day designs ensure good durability under normal operating condition uh, so it must be something durable uh, jangan sebab if you have more uh, pneumatic air entering more pressure dalam ni so your material must be able to withstand that pressure uh, jangan uh, guna 2 3 kali koyak so the material koyak so it's not durable okay so if it always requires maintenance uh, so kacau lah dekat industri because you always need to demand for repair, repair, repair. Uh, so do it. So if your application uh, you are buying, so make sure you check what materials is you, uh, what material is used inside. Uh, macam beli dekat Shopee lah. So beli dekat Shopee, you always check the specification, you always baca dulu, tengok review semua kan. Uh, so buying a pneumatic component pun, uh, you must do that. You go and check with the supplier 
uh, check with the previous purchase. Uh, so kalau okay, then you can buy. Okay, so spring return cylinder. So there are two types actually. Okay, so two types. You have push type and also, uh, so you have a push type and also you have a pull type. Okay, cylinder ni ada dua jenis. Okay, what is push type? So udara masuk, so you know one side is a spring. So udara masuk, so the piston and the rod is pushed out of the cylinder. So ini adalah cylinder body. So rod is pushed out of the cylinder. So that we call as a push type. Uh, so ada lagi satu type. Uh, so you have a spring here. Uh, so pressure masuk. So the rod will enter inside. So when uh, there's a force here, it will push the piston to the right. So the piston ni akan masuk ke dalam. Uh, and the rod will go go inside. So this is a pull type. Because the, the piston is pulling the rod back inside this body. Uh, so ini adalah pull type. So there are two types. Uh, Solen yang uh, pernah keluar juga, biasa keluar. So uh, explain uh, push and pull type uh, single acting cylinder. Uh, so you must draw uh, and you don't need to show lah. Okay. So that's on the uh, single acting cylinder. So you know it's uh, the uniqueness of a single acting cylinder. Dia ada satu working port. Kemudian dia ada spring. Uh, so the return is executed by the spring. So only extend is by the supply. We have another type we call as a double acting cylinder. So double acting cylinder, kita panggil as a DAC. So double acting cylinder. Yang ni tak ada spring. Dia ada dua working port. Okay, so east side, uh, uh, both side ada, uh, ada port, working port. So the forward motion of the cylinder, compressor masuk, dia akan extend. So return to no spring. So return you need to supply air from the other side. Nah, baru dia retract balik. Kalau you tak supply on the other side, cylinder will be in the extended position until you supply. Uh, so double acting cylinder dia ada advantage because yang normal double acting cylinder without any modification can extend from 300 mm up to 2 meters. Uh, so kenapa dia boleh, yang ni dia boleh uh, maintain uh, longer, longer stroke because no spring inside. Uh, so because a single acting cylinder uh, the length of the single active cylinder is determined by the normal length of uh, spring. Uh, so, dalam double acting cylinder, dia ada advantage uh, where you no need to use a spring. So, it can extend up to 2 meters. Uh, 2 meters is quite, so lagi tinggi daripada you. Okay, so norm, uh, usually. So, 2 meters are very good uh, length. Okay, so you can see the construction. So you have a uh, port, so working port. So you have uh, input and also output to a port. So you have a piston inside. You have a rod. So uh, this, I think, uh, the next next slide, lagi like clear. Okay. Okay. So sorry. Ah, uh, taplah I explain the case ni. Okay, so when the compressor enters, so force will be created. The force will push this piston, uh, move out of the, uh, yang ni adalah push type, push type cylinder. So it will move out of the cylinder. Then uh, udara yang ada dekat sini, dia akan keluar. Okay. So you need to know that double acting cylinder no spring return, no spring dekat sini. So jangan waktu saya suruh lukis, you lukis double acting cylinder with spring. Uh, so immediately potong maka. Because single, uh, spring is only for single acting. Air pressure can be applied in either, either side, supply or an exhaust. So you can supply, uh, kalau you supply dekat sini, so it will be a supply port. So yang ni exhaust port. Uh, kalau you supply dekat sini, yang ni jadi supply port, yang ni jadi exhaust port. 
because udara dekat sini dia akan keluar so mostly use in application where larger stroke length is uh, required because we can up, extend up to uh, 2 meters so you can see here so piston rod uh, there are types of uh, direct uh, double acting cylinder so piston side uh, piston rod in one side so this is uh, the other side tak ada piston. So piston is only in one side. So kita panggil as piston rod on one side. So you can see uh, the air is entering here. Pushing, extend. Uh, yang rod ni akan extend out. Udara yang ada dekat sini akan keluar. So to retract the cylinder, what you do? You supply uh, air at the opposite direction. So masuk, udara, udara masuk dekat sini. So it will create the force here. It will push this piston. Outward, udara yang ada di kebahagiaan ni, dia akan keluar ni. Yeah. So, that's on the return stroke. Okay. There are the other type. There, there is the other type of uh, the double acting cylinder. Kita panggil as a piston rod on both side. So, it will be like this. So, both side as a piston. Uh, so, the construction will be like this. So, a piston here, you have to rod in both side. Okay, so if you want it to extend this side, you supply air compressor here. Udara yang ada dekat sini akan keluar, so the cylinder will extend to the right. So if you want it to move to this side, uh, you supply from this uh, this spot. Uh, so this spot will be extra. So when you will use this uh, piston rod on both sides, uh, so use in an application where work can be done by both ends of the cylinder and maximum length is required. So you if compare the single acting tadi, it will be very small. So can we stand higher side loads because they have an extra bearing uh, one on each rod to extend the loading. So there are the additional features lah. Uh, so you can uh, do a lot of work because it has a extra bearing uh, to uh, exit the force. Okay, then we have a special design industrial piston. So in industry, the differentiation is made uh, between special design of regular cylinder and special duty cylinder designed for a special purpose that are known by design designation of their own uh, okay so ini adalah something yang um, either custom made custom made maksudnya uh, you ask the vendor so I need uh, like this like this like this so you design for me uh, so supplier come up with the new design only for you so that is custom made or special made it's already available uh, so you believe believe. So some of the special design cylinders uh, uh, is having it can be either single or double acting cylinder, uh, but usually it will be double acting cylinder. So we have a telescopic cylinder, we have a tandem cylinder, and also a rodless cylinder. So what is telescopic cylinder? So telescopic cylinder uh, So you can see something like your auto gate the garuma. Uh, so that's uh, one example lah. Uh, so it's either one stage or two stage or three stage uh, so like this this is a three stage extension uh, so kalau they extend they akan jadi panjang uh, kalau it retract retractor position will be shorter okay so telescopic cylinder shown in figure A and B is used when long stroke uh, length and short retracted lengths are required. So certain place, uh, you require the extension to be longer, tapi you tak ada tempat nak simpan. Uh, so when it retracted, you expect it to be using a smaller area, but extend digunakan uh, yang, yang panjang lah. Uh, so uh, normally we can see this but it's not pneumatic tapi boleh tengok lah dekat lori lori uh, pasir 
Ah uh, so lori yang boleh boleh uh, angkat okay so you can see under that you have this uh, telescopic cylinder ah uh, so yang dalam lori itu adalah hidrolik ah uh, tapi konsep dia samalah ah uh, so you can see ah uh, to to save that to to simpan dia it, it requires a very a small area so ah uh, sebab uh, waktu a uh, cylinder dia tak extend so uh, cylinder tu is a uh, dia simpan bawa the platform so only when you nak angkat platform tu dia extend uh, so extend in stages stage 1 stage 2 stage 3 different different height different different angle okay so the extend in stages each stage consists of a sleeve that fits inside the previous stage so apa yang akan jadi so udara masuk Udara masuk, uh, it will first push the outermost, it will push this, uh, this sampai dekat ujung, dia dah sampai dekat ujung, after that, it will push the second stage, then third stage. Uh, so one by one lah. So it depends also. Sometimes yang keluar akan keluar dulu. Uh, stage one keluar dulu, baru stage two, baru stage three. Kadang-kadang stage three keluar dulu, tarik stage two, tarik stage one. Uh, but somehow it will extend. Okay, so depends on the uh, telescopic cylinder that you are buying. Uh, yang ni saya dah explain lah. Okay, so in this case, uh, so it masuk, it extend this, uh, then uh, did I extend yang ni? So the second second one, okay, uh, second one, uh, okay. yang ni actually hanya dua stage. So it cuma ada dua position, so it's not like this. So once it extend this, uh, udara akan masuk dekat sini, then it will start to push this and this thing will extend. Uh, so two position, two stages. So you boleh baca lah. So how it extend and also retract. Okay, so we have another type. Tandem cylinder. Tadi kita tengok telescopy. So this is a tandem cylinder. So tandem cylinder is actually a one body but you have uh, two cylinders inside. Uh, dia ada dua ruang sebab tengah-tengah ada dinding. So you have uh, two pistons and one rod. One rod ni dia sambung. Okay, so you can see uh, since we consider this like uh, two cylinder in one body so you have uh, two working pots. Uh, so two working pots in the first chamber and two working pots in the second chamber. So dia, dia, dia ada dua. So udara yang masuk tu, dia akan push both side. So udara masuk dekat sini, udara masuk dekat sini. So it will push this piston and it will push this piston. So it will move with a uh, larger force. Okay, use where large output force is required with a applicable saving to bulk and weight. So when you don't want the cylinder to be too uh, too long uh, but you want to get to have the rod knee, dia boleh buat uh, double the force. Uh, macam tadi the normal double acting cylinder. So let's say it can uh, the, out, out, uh, the rod can push up to 10 newton. So double uh, tandem cylinder dia boleh push at 20 newton sebab dia ada dua dua extra force walaupun length dia akan jadi appendi sikit lah uh, so and you only use a small diameter of the assembly ok so that is on the tandem cylinder so you boleh tengok it is two separate double acting cylinder arranged in line with one cylinder body. Uh, macam saya bagi tahu tadi, one cylinder body but you have uh, two double acting cylinder inside. So the power generated by the uh, two is uh, added together thereby approximately doubling the piston output. Uh, so it can, when, uh, when one double acting cylinder can do 10 newton, so dalam tandem cylinder ada dua double acting cylinder. So instead of 10 newton, dia boleh buat 20 newton. So itu yang dia explain dekat sini. 
pressure is applied in both pistons resulting in increased force because of larger area uh, so the case ini this is area 1 and this is area 2 so more forces are uh, uh, used uh, because it's covering uh, two uh, two area two piston area tapi dia ada satu drawback so the drawback is that this cylinder must be longer than a standard cylinder of larger flow flow rate than a standard cylinder uh, to achieve the equal speed because the flow must go in both piston. Okay. Tadi, uh, waktu cylinder, double acting cylinder yang biasa, they extend. Uh, so they extend uh, at a certain speed. So let's say 10 meter per second. Uh, tapi, dekat sini uh, the speed will be aft uh, sebab uh, the extension ruang uh, uh, ruang ruang yang ada dekat sini is big is bigger compared to here yang dekat sini dia dah jadi separuh-separuh so meaning it, even though the cylinder can extend uh, dia hanya boleh extend sampai sini Yang ni pun hanya boleh extend sampai sini. Uh, so it, it has some limitation dekat sini lah. Uh, so the drawback. So if you want it to operate like the normal double acting cylinder, the the uh, the length and also speed, yang ni you kena panjangkan lah. Uh, so panjangkan. So maksudnya yang ni dub, double acting cylinder size, yang ni pun double acting cylinder size. The, the normal double acting. Uh, then uh, you can overcome this drawback. Uh, and also in terms of speed, uh, you will increase lah. So, but speed, speed in tandem cylinder, dia akan uh, jadi separuh. Uh, so, if you want it to achieve uh, bigger force, but at the same speed and also uh, same length like the normal double acting cylinder, you can double up the size. Okay, then you have a rodless double acting cylinder. Uh, rodless maksudnya uh, tanpa rod. So you don't have a rod inside. Macam tadi double acting cylinder kita memang tahu ada piston dengan rod. Uh, so rodless cylinder. So it, uh, it is something that uh, don't have rod. So it is using a different mechanism. Okay, so boleh kita akan tengok. So rodless air cylinder differs from a basic as cylinder in in that no piston rod extension outside the cylinder body uh, so dia tak ada dia tak ada uh, piston moving in or out of the cylinder body instead the internal piston is connected to an external carriage by a human uh, by mean of uh, magnetic or mechanical coupling system. So, kita akan tengok lah. So, we have uh, two types. Uh, yeah, actually, ada dua, dua, so it's not three. Eh? So, it's two types of uh, rotless cylinder. So, first one is cable cylinder and also the second type is cable with magnetically coupled slide. So, boleh tengok dekat sini. This is the cable type. Uh, you boleh tengok. So, it can go up to uh, 2 meters also. Very long stroke. It is consists of nylon jacketed cable. So, you have a nylon cable. Enters the cylinder barrel. So, ini adalah cylinder. So, you boleh tengok. Dalam ni ada, ada, ada piston. But the piston don't have a, don't have a pist, uh, rod, but instead it uh, it is connected to a nylon rope. Uh, so nylon rope. So exists through the gallon slit uh, seal. Other seal because in here. So enters the other end. Uh, so sama macam gambar ni lah. Okay, so ini adalah gambar, gambar the actual 
uh, rod less cable cylinder so you can see you have a piston here so you have the rod and you have a yoke a yoke is the place where you Uh, yoke is the place where you keep your load lah. so any, anything you want to carry uh, so you can uh, place it here so apa lagi dekat sini okay uh, so the rest i think you can read so i will show from here if you supply air here uh, so like the arrow here you supply air so this piston will move to the left Uh, sebab udara masuk dekat sini you will push this piston to the left so kalau waktu dia move to the left so this rod will go the outward and it will create a motion in the pulley and this load will move to the right sebab yang ni diikut uh, so load ni akan move to the right so meaning The direction of the load is opposite of the direction of the piston inside this rodless cylinder. Uh, so, kalau udara masuk dekat sini, so this piston, piston will move this side and the direction will be like this and this load will move to the left. Uh, so, the rodless cylinder macam tu. And similar concept, macam tadi dia gunakan rod uh, that you can use also a cylinder with magnetically, magnetically coupled slide uh, macam ni lah so piston as a powerful magnet which bond the piston inside the cylinder with carriage outside which is also a powerful magnet uh, so boleh tengok dekat sini gam, yang warna biru ni adalah magnet so you have a carriage with magnet here Uh, inside here and also here uh, then you have a uh, two working port okay so two working port so the magnet so magnet normally even though you have a uh, surface here it is still powerful to get connected to these two magnets okay so the stroke one of the advantage of uh, this type of cylinder the stroke can go up to 4 meters okay 4000 millimeters okay because is it don't have anything uh, in between it, and it's more like wireless uh, so no wire so it's more like uh, based on magnetic field so the major advantage of this type uh, of cylinder no leakage because you are not using anything extra okay so no direct contact with the moving element therefore the wear is less uh, so apa apa yang bergerak ni dia no direct contact so meaning tak ada geseran and because of geseran uh, the the components dia tak aus uh, so dia it won't wear lah Where, where and tear will not happen and the orientation of the carriage can be changed easily uh, so maksudnya yang ni you just uh, angkat so yang ni no connection angkat you boleh pusingkan so you can you can uh, keep it either way as long it's connected so no the orientation of the carriage you can change accordingly okay so I think we have uh, reached the last slide for today. Uh, so all this will be covered in your ad puzzle. So ad puzzle, uh, so we don't have uh, anything much. Uh, but make sure you listen. Uh, listen to your ad puzzle. So, so far uh, on today's lecture, I just want to So any question on today's lecture? Anything that you want to ask? that you are not clear okay so kalau tak ada soalan so i think that's all for today uh, so we will 
Uh, this week, we don't have anything else. A uh, lab pun, uh, which is I put in the cap, I can, I can start next week. Uh, so, we won't have anything. And uh, lecture pun uh, for this week, synchronous, I cover hari ni. Because the slide uh, not much. So, Friday pun tak ada class. So, later I will update. So, Friday kita takkan ada one hour class. So, one hour class is only if I cannot finish the syllabus uh, on uh, Wednesday uh, for that particular chapter. Uh, kalau ada extra tu, I will cover on uh, Friday. So, this week memang tak ada apa lah after this. So, we won't have anything. Uh, so, uh, at puzzle I will give. So, make sure you do and we will discuss next week. Uh, and uh, be prepared for the lab next week. Okay, so if you don't have anything, so that's all for me. So, thank you.